These professional chefs all want to break into the top ranks of the world's culinary elite. Deciding who has the talent to cut it is MasterChef judge Greg Wallace. That is sublime. <laughs> and culinary legend Michelle Rue Jr. With two Michelin stars, he's expecting perfection. This is definitely what I would expect to see in a Michelin starred establishment. Cooking doesn't get better than this. So far, this professional competition has unearthed eight great chefs. In the semi-finals, each day we'll see two chefs battle it out against each other, but only one can go through. In a true test of their skill and commitment, Steve and Daniel will both have to cook service in a Michelin-starred restaurant. Being so close to the final, it just makes you want it more and more, and to go out now would just be gutting. Getting this far in the competition is excellent. Now I'm here, I really do want to win it. There is only going to be one winner, and hopefully that winner will be me. Streets of Mayfair is one of London's most prestigious restaurants, The Greenhouse. The Greenhouse has one Michelin star, one of the few restaurants in the country to have such an accolade. As you walk towards The Greenhouse, that beautiful entrance, it is stunning. It sets the standard. You see that and you know you are in for something special. Steve and Daniel are taking on their toughest challenge yet surviving the extreme discipline of Michelin cooking. There can be no room for error, because at the end of their challenges, one will be going home. There are thousands of chefs, but only a very, very few ever make it to michelin starred standard. It takes years of hard work, years of dedication to achieve that level. They will be scrutinized by head chef Antonin Bonnet, who's held his Michelin star since 2006. Antonin Bonnet was born in 1971 in Lyon, France. OK, guys, you went on a cod, a dodin and a risotto. A chef with early promise, Antonin honed his skills working for the legendary Michel Bras at his three-star restaurant Brasse in Léol, Aubrac. There he became a disciple of an exacting discipline of cooking that champions measurement in the pursuit of culinary greatness. Antonin Bonnet cooks like a scientist, with extreme precision. The recipes he uses are extremely intricate and have to be measured to the gram. He has eyes of steel. He is a hawk in the kitchen. Nothing gets past him. Welcome to the greenhouse. Good morning, Chef. The level I'm expecting from you is of a really, really high standard. If it's not fulfilling the requirement, if it's not fitting the standards, basically we're not going to be able to send the food out. For me, please. To cook at the mission star level, it's, it's like the army. It's like, it's like a boot camp. It's like sports to a high level. You have to be focused. It's quite straining and still you want to keep a smile on your face. So you're going to find like information with weights, measurements, timing. I've been wanting to cook in a mission star restaurant for a long time, but I haven't had the opportunity up to now. And to come here today is like a dream come true, to be honest. I need to show that I can step up to this level and, and compete with the best. Steve has always delivered us good flavours and food and well presented food. He has a good, delicate touch. The whole thing is bordering on perfect. 
Steve has obviously got a certain amount of good technical ability. I mean, that pudding, actually, I thought was delicious. But when Steve was put under pressure, he did have timing issues. Are you going to be able to plate up on time? A little bit behind overall. But... We can't have the first one up late, Steve. Steve cannot afford those timing issues today. Sometimes I think they have more time than I actually have. Today I need to be really on top to make sure that I do deliver the food on time. You can't go under, you can't go over. you got to be right on the spot, OK? If there's a line, you need to stick to that line. So make sure you stay on the line, yeah? Sure. Obviously, never working in a Michelin star kitchen before. I've never ate in a Michelin star kitchen before, so it's a complete new experience for me. So today, I'm going to be under a lot of pressure but to actually show what I can do. Daniel has always given us tasty, flavoursome food. However, his presentation has sometimes let him down. The tastes and the flavours are fine dining. But the presentation is, is definitely not there. I think your flavour combinations are great. As long as I could eat your dish blindfolded, I'd think I was being served very well. But he is learning. By every round, he is listening and taking on board what we're telling him. It's a wonderful, delicate balance of colour. It looks incredibly professional. Good to look at, good to eat. To come to a Michelin star kitchen, this is an absolute dream come true today. It's what I aspire to, it's what I want to do. So I've really got to be on top form today to produce the standards that he's after. With only two hours to service, the two chefs don't have long to grasp the complexities of their recipes. My recipes here are really precise, they're really exact. They don't need to elaborate, they don't need to change anything, they just need to stick to what he says. Steve is responsible for black leg chicken dodine with wild herbs, Swiss chard and Jersey royal potatoes. This is what you gotta do. Stick to it and you'll be fine. If you don't stick to it, and I'm not taking it. A dodine is meat that has been removed from the bone and reshaped. Steve's first process is to roll the meat and prepare the stuffing made with Swiss chard, herbs and minced chicken hearts. Um, to keep the flesh moist, Antonin part cooks his dodine in a water bath. You're going to put the dodine and when they reach 62 degrees Celsius core temperature, you're going to have to take them out, OK, really quickly. <laughs> you got to make sure you cook them to the exact temperature. It's got to be perfect. Yes, sir. During service, the dodine is fully cooked by being basted in a pan. So basically, when you, when you do the glazing, make sure you do baste continuously. Now you got this nice, um, shiny glaze. It's really important. It's part of the presentation. And then the concentration of the taste of the flavor will be on the top, OK? Don't overheat the dodine, otherwise it will explode, it will burst. And then if you burst, you lose the shape, and then there's no more dish. It's going to be a big challenge to meet Chef's high standards. It's clearly so exact and so precise, uh, more than I imagined, and I'll just have to work as hard as I can to make sure I'm up to it. So if you see the way you put it, it looks like really tidy. And that's it. It's ready to go. Yeah? The key success for the Dodin is the timing. Timing, timing, and timing again is essential. Daniel will be making steamed cod crusted with morels, oyster cream, baby gem lettuce and fresh peas. It's got to look good, it's got to taste good, it's got to smell good. It doesn't matter what you do. Everything we do here, it's got to be pristine. Daniel's first task is to de-shell his peas. You have to remove the skin by breaking them and every single piece, a half portion. Let's say we sell 10 portion, you know what's to come. The cod has to be cut to not just the perfect shape, but also to the exact gram. All right, Daniel, so uh, basically you need to stick to 140 gram, OK? Nothing more, nothing less. If it's under, I can't serve it. I'm not, I'm not going to be happy. Jeff is very, very exact about what he wants, very exact about quantities, details, plate enough. It's 
got the exact I mean, it's quite worrying, quite nerve wracking. It's got to be right first time and every time, basically. The cod, it's a really delicate, uh, pristine dish with really light flavors, and you don't need much to kill the dish. The presentation is, is crucial. It's got to look really good. You first eat with your eyes. I've got paying customers, and I can't afford those people to be disappointed. Michelin inspectors are anonymous and could visit the restaurant at any time. So it's essential that Daniel and Steve don't let standards slip. That food may end up in front of a Michelin inspector. That is real pressure. For Daniel and Steve, their future ambitions are about to be put to the test. Inspired food for a Michelin service. Now I know what I've got to do and it's pretty much make or break. I'm quite nervous now, it's, it's putting the pressure on. Not 100% sure what's going on. It's a new kitchen, like I said, it's a slight start, new job for the first time and those kind of nerves. Right, some Arch 10 covers, two mackerel, five lick, three carpaccio, one spring salad vegetarian, two full of seven carb. Three chef! Three chef! Daniel has seven cod dishes to prepare, but there have been no orders for Steve. Yeah, I've had seven orders on. May as well start as I mean to go on. Right, fish in? Fish in, chef. How long for the fish to come up? About one minute left. On one minute left. Yeah. Thank you. Daniel, how long for the cod? Two minutes, chef. A little bit more high pressure than I'm used to. But lovely looking food and definitely think that's what I want to do. Daniel, you don't have time to talk. Come on, move on. Great, right, Chef. Oh, you put the fish right there? Yeah, Chef. Chef Shrey, go get your garnish. Come on, let's go. Did you season the piece? Yes, yeah, Chef. Great, right, Chef. Make sure next time you season a bit more. Great, right, yeah? Chef. Touch more. Yes, yeah, Chef. Are right, you going to start to put the fish on? Presentation has been Daniel's weakness, but at this level, Antonin demands perfection. Make sure your hand goes under, don't get sloppy. See how this is your result. On, be gentle, don't break one. Hey, do result, Come on, let's go. Take your trays, clear up the paths, get ready for the next one, yeah? Uh, Daniel, make sure next time you please the season right, yeah? Yes, yeah, Chef. Thank you. Uh, some ash, three carbs, two capacho, one macro, full of two card, one dot in. Steve finally gets an order, while Daniel has another three cod dishes to get ready. Come on, it's all together at the same time, yeah? Having spent the first 20 minutes doing nothing, Steve is having trouble getting up to speed. Did you start to glaze the dot in? Uh, the glaze is on, so that's what right. I'm doing. Another, finish that, finish that, where are you going? Yeah. Finish that one, yeah. and then move on to the dodin, yeah? Okay. Show me, hand, Chef. Steve? Wait. Make sure I got the uh, dodin ready, glaze in four minutes on the pass. Wait, Chef. But while Steve is still cooking his one dodin, Daniel is already on the pass with his three cod. You check the seasoning, it's correct? Wait, Chef. Is that fine? Can I trust fine. you? Yeah? yeah you sure? You. Keep plating. All right, Sibyl, go. Yep. Wait. Are you ready? Are you glazed or not? Wait. We we or we know? Uh, 30 seconds up. 30 seconds late, OK? It's on time altogether. I give you an eight-minute warning, give you a five-minute warning, give you a two-minute warning, and now I tell you on the pass. Come on, let's go. Come on, keep moving, keep moving. Daniel's cod is ready to send. Service. But Steve is in serious trouble. Get this one back, give it more glazing and more shine on this. Great. More glazing, more, more, more. You're late, come on, let's go. Yeah. 
Next time you're late, you let know everybody, I'm one need one more minute. Wait. Right. Two more minutes. Sure. I need half an hour. I don't care. Because it's all together and fast in time, yeah? Wait, chef. Thank you. I think, to be honest, standing around for too long with nothing to do, I sort of lost focus. Didn't quite get it all up on time. Smash the covers. One result or one card. Let's go. Wait, chef. Service is in full swing. Garnish up for the cards, please. Right. And Daniel is coping, but Michelin standard food demands that every single dish is perfect. All right, keep moving. Very let's sure. go, let's go, let's go. Keep the pace and you keep moving. All right, let's go, send. Service. All right, that was good. Thank you very much, chef. Thank you. It's OK for the chef to send. So far, so good. I, I'm enjoying myself, but stressed. <laughs> Uh, Samash on the fly, one dot in. Yes, Wait, Wait. Overshadowed by Daniel's performance, Steve now has one final chance to impress. I've got a chance to redeem myself now with this one, so I'll make sure everything gets up on time. Make sure everything's absolutely perfect and hopefully Chef will be pleased with it. Okay, Steve, three minutes. I'm going to be one minute late on this, Chef. Be one minute late. Where's Why? Because uh, the the uh, switch charge is going in now. In 20 minutes, you could have done the switch charge easily. Yeah, I don't have the water for you. Sorry, Chef. Listen, you have 20 minutes. Wait, chef. This is plenty of time. Yes, yeah, Chef. Uh, you need to get your timing right. You need to get the organization right, OK? Wait, Chef. So this is not sufficient, OK? So it's not acceptable. You give me 20 minutes for the shot, it's got to be ready in 20 minutes shot. That's it. Yes, yeah? Chef. Wait, Chef. Now you're two minutes behind. Sorry, Chef. Don't sorry me. You just did it in time. Right. We, 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 we. I'm going to call the customer and I'm going to tell we. Uh, see what he says, yeah? Sorry, Chef. Service? Yes, Chef. That's five minutes behind. You're on your own. If I get people with you, it means the whole crew is behind. It means the whole service collapse. It means you die. Yeah. Timing is crucial. Sure. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Sure. It's super important. Lunch wasn't a great experience for me. It didn't go so well. Hopefully, I'll be able to impress him before I leave here, because I'll be disappointed if I have to leave here on this note. I've had a good start, so I am going to have to keep, keep it going. I can't, I can't take my foot off the gas and I can't, I can't slow down. I've got to keep the standards higher. Yeah, I really enjoyed it today. Really enjoyed it. It was good fun. Hard work was good fun. Daniel and Steve now have to compete once more. They must each recreate Antonin Bonnet's Michelin starred signature dish. Signature dishes would have been refined over years and honed to be perfection. They better not mess that up. They've only got one chance to get it right. Antonin's signature dish is sweetbreads with a wild garlic caramel, wild herbs, leeks, and a veal jus. As simple as the dish seems to be, it's got to be cooked to perfection and it's got to be perfect, otherwise you go from something great to something which is totally average. Creating a garlic caramel requires a high level of skill to combine the raw garlic with the caramelized sugar without compromising these distinct flavors. The dish requires precision to cook the sweetbreads to perfection. Desperate to show that I can cook these signatures as well, because I don't want to come away from here just knowing that I haven't shown what I can do and shown my full potential. It's really nerve-wracking cooking a mission star dish from scratch. Especially with it being the head chef's signature dish, it just makes it that little bit more important, that little bit more pressure on me to get it right. 
There's two things which are really difficult to cook in this world is monkfish and sweetbreads. If you undercook them, the texture is horrendous, you can't eat it. If you overcook it, all the juice runs out within a second and it becomes a sponge. You have only one way, the perfect one. Antonin is joined for the tasting by his maitre d' Jean-Marie Miorada, who understands just what Michelin diners expect. Steve, I'm impressed by your cooking skills. The, the main element, which is the super head and the legs, is great. I mean, it's been cooked to, to the way it should be. The dish is good. I mean, the taste is good, the flavor is good. And uh, it's, uh, as Antonin said, it's, uh, it's properly cooked. For first, without being shown the recipe, uh, it's, it's pretty good, really. Thank you I, I need to admit, really. Today has been a steep learning curve. It's been a tough day. Things haven't gone my way. But this afternoon, I had a chance to redeem myself. I feel I've regained a little bit of honor in there, but at the end of the day, nothing's won yet. So I won't be happy until I get to the final and, and win it, hopefully. Basically, the, the main component, the, um, the sweet bread, is slightly undercooked. The other thing is the lack of color on the outside. You need to give it more color, so it'd be like this little crunchiness. That was the main key difficulty of the thing, okay? As Antonin said, it's undercooked. And the thing is that you can't serve this to a guest. And the first bite or the first cut from the guest, this will be sent back to the kitchen. So that's a problem we will have in a restaurant. I mean, we've got really high standards and everything needs to be served the right way, which means it has to be cooked to perfection. And this is slightly under, and I can't really serve this in the restaurant. I'm happy and disappointed at the same time. Really happy with my performance over lunchtime. But that last part was actually a lot more um, pressurized than I thought it would be. To the Michelin star standards, it wasn't quite there, but that's that's why I'm here. I'm here to learn, and I'm not a Michelin star chef. Both chefs impressed me today. They both done a really good job, and they both made some errors. The one that will make the difference is the one that will have the ability to concentrate. But they could both make it. Steve and Daniel now have to take everything they've learned back to MasterChef HQ. They have just one more chance to fight for a place in the final. We have two wonderfully talented chefs cooking against each other now for a place in the next round. This is crunch time. Today could possibly change my life. I just really hope I can do it. I don't want to let myself down. I desperately don't want to go home today. I don't think I performed particularly well at the restaurant. Hopefully today with my own food, I can go in there and show them that I can cook to a really high standard. Our chefs have now experienced what great cooking in a Michelin-starred establishment is. They now have to reproduce that.
Welcome back, guys. You now have the experience in Michelin-starred kitchens. You have seen what is needed and what is required. We now want you to produce two great dishes in an hour. Using that experience, impress us today and you will go through. The finals now are just a whisker away. Up to you. Best cook takes everything. Good luck, gentlemen. Feed us well. Off you go. This is make or break for our two chefs. The pressure is on. One against one. Chef against chef. Winner takes all. After messing up on the timings at the restaurant, I was disappointed in myself, and now I'm better than that. And I'm desperate today to show Michelle Rue that I can get quality food up and on time. Steve's aiming to reach the levels expected with his first dish of pan-fried mackerel, pickled cucumber and tomato salad with a shallot dressing. Steve's decided to pickle the cucumber to add some acidity that will complement the oily fish. I think Steve is a really interesting starter. Those flavours should work, but can he elevate that to that beautiful presentation that we are looking for? His second dish is roast rosé veal with peas, asparagus and curried sweetbreads. The dish will be brought together with a jus made from the veal juices. They are all big individual flavours, but can he make them all blend together? Has Master Chef made you change your views of cooking? It's opened my eyes to a few things. It's made me realise just what the standard expected is. And um, obviously, it's been a great learning experience, I think. I feel like I'm a bit better cook now than I was when I started, so I'll take mm. that away from it, whatever happens. As you advance through the competition, does it become more important to stay in the competition? To get this far is great, but I want to go all the way. I entered the competition because I wanted to win it and nothing's changed there. I'm just more determined now. I want to be a Michelin star chef eventually, and to have come here and cooked and not impressed enough would be a massive knock in confidence. To go out now would just be absolutely devastating. Gentlemen, you have 30 minutes left. Going to the restaurant has really, really inspired me. Uh, it's given me that little bit of knowledge that I, what I know I need to take through to the next round. I'm going to put everything in today I possibly can and get through to the final. Daniel hopes to reach Michelin standards with his first dish of goat's cheese mousse, beetroot with a truffle honey dressing. I think that sounds great as a combination. I'm not a great fan of truffled honey, but if you get that in just the right amount, that can really bring this dish together. After his experience in the kitchen, Daniel's focus is on perfecting the presentation. Daniel's second dish is sea trout, pea velouté, caviar, and a warm herb and chorizo salad. This is a dish that, if I see on the menu, I would order. I love sea trout, and it's a perfect accompaniment of peas and broad beans. But he's bringing chorizo into play here. Now, there's a balancing act that I hope he can pull off. If he can, he has got the palate of a master. What interests me here is how you are going to take these dishes with good ingredients and make them special. Um, today, I'm going to take away what I've taken from the Michelin Star Kitchen, um, the good flavours, the simplicity, and just make everything perfect from A to Z on the plate. Make everything, the flavours perfect, make the presentation perfect. Today, it's going to be absolutely spot on for you guys. So what is it you have got, do you think, that we have seen in you? Um, I think I've got the potential. 
uh, I, I learned at every step. Uh, the, 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 little, the, the little time I spent in the Michelin Star Kitchen and the amount I learned was just absolutely phenomenal. I loved every second of it. If you stand in front of us one afternoon and uh, Chef shouts out the winner of MasterChef is Daniel, what happens then? <sighs> Dream come true. I love food, I'm passionate about it. I want to do really well in my career. But also, I'm doing this for my girlfriend. She's been really, really supportive. Um, I think without her, I probably just wouldn't be here today. Guys, you have just over six minutes to complete your dishes. Last 60 seconds. Time's up. Daniel's first dish is a goat's cheese mousse, beetroot, and a truffle honey dressing. To make a plate of food look so pretty and elegant takes a lot of hard work and effort. It's as pretty as a picture. Thank you. And uh, it's most definitely uh, the style that we're looking for. It's smashing. Thank you. Well done. Thank you very much. If it tastes as good as it looks, I'll be very it's happy. Mm-hmm. Mm. That is delicious. I think that's got the perfect balance of acidity to cut through that very rich, creamy cheese. I'm very glad as well that you haven't overdone it on the truffle honey. There's just enough sweetness in there. This is definitely what I would expect to see in a Michelin starred establishment. That style of food, that style of presentation, and that depth of flavor. Well done. Excellent, thank you. That's absolutely yummy. It looks stunning. It tastes every bit as good as it looks. Excellent. I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Daniel's hoping to maintain the high standards with his sea trout and caviar on a pea velouté with warm herb, broad bean and chorizo salad. Again, Daniel, I think that uh, this looks very elegant. Mm. Sea trout is wonderful, nice crispy skin, well cooked. The peas and um, broad beans are beautifully cooked as well. The chorizo is lovely, adds another dimension to this dish. It works beautifully well. However, when I tasted it with the caviar, it doesn't work well. That saltiness of the caviar didn't work with the chorizo and the peas. You had a very, very good dish there without the caviar. Mate, the attention to detail, you've taken the skin off the broad bean and off the peas as well to make everything more green and vivid and make everything softer. I mean, that is the sort of attention to detail that Michelin chefs are made of. It's subtle, it's clever, and it fills your palate full of lovely flavours. It's absolutely lovely. Thank you. These two plates of food are as good as you would order anywhere. You have really cracked it. Happiest man in the world at the minute. <laughs> wow. I'm very, very happy with my dishes. To get those kind of comments of Greg and Michelle, it's just absolutely amazing. I wanted to punch there, I wanted to run round in circles and scream. Steve is looking for perfection with his first dish of pan-fried mackerel, 
pickled cucumber and tomato salad with a shallot dressing. First of all, your starter. Your starter looks very nice, I must say. I, I love the colours. It shows a lot of elegance. Saying that, I would have only put three tomatoes or maybe cut them all in half. They look a little bit too big for the dish, but nonetheless, I think it, it's, it's been presented in a very elegant fashion. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Your mackerel is lovely and crisp on the outside from the um, breadcrumbs and gives it a lovely texture and flavour. The mackerel itself, it, the fillet, is a little bit pink. I like it that way. The cucumber's been marinated in a kind of sweet and sour pickle, uh, which is really nice. The shallot as well has got a real sharpness and bite to it. The tomatoes are sweet. Combine all of that together, and it is absolutely delicious. The taste is very, very good. Sublime. That is sublime. <laughs> that is beautiful. And what makes it so clever is it's really, really big flavour, yet it still feels light. That is very good cooking. Steve must reach today's exceptional standards with his roast rosé veal with peas, asparagus, curried sweetbreads and a veal sauce. Wow, this looks lovely. I must say it's incredibly neat and tidy. It is presented how I would expect food to be presented in a top restaurant. Beautiful. Thank you. Ooh. Steve, that is very good. Very, very good. That is a really top draw sauce. It is full of flavour, packs a real punch. Excellent. The meat has been beautifully cooked, well seasoned. The pea puree is silky smooth. The little nuggets of sweetbreads. I love the fact that you've put a pinch of curry powder in with the breadcrumb and it gives it another dimension, but not too much. There's just enough to give it a little flavour, a little kick. This is cooking of the highest order. And this is most definitely the style of food that would be gracing any great restaurant. Oh, my friend, that is absolutely delicious. The beefiness, the meatiness of that sauce fills up your mouth instantly. Then in comes a little bit of sweet pea puree. In comes the sweetness on that sweet bread. And underneath it all is that soft, beautiful veal. That's the sort of dish that has you sticking your finger in the sauce at the end. That is lovely. It means a lot to have praise from people like yourself, so I just don't really know what to say, to be honest. <laughs> Absolutely delighted with the way that went. That was the best reaction I could have hoped for. Obviously, it's 50 50 chances to ever go out in this round. So, if I do go out, I know at least now I go home with my head held high and great comments behind me. I am genuinely bowled over by the quality of cooking today. You have made our jobs so difficult. off to both of them because the food they've cooked for us today has been exceptional. Flavours, textures, presentation, everything that we had asked for, they gave us. That is the food of Michelin starred kitchens. How we are going to divide these two, I've no idea. Daniel's starter was absolutely beautiful and it tasted Glorious. Every piece that you chewed on was perfect. It was delicious. It was a great starter. His second course of sea trout was equally as good. It was inspired. Taking the membrane, taking the skin off the peas. I mean, what attention to detail. My only problem with that dish was the irrelevance of a spoonful of caviar on it. I really hope I've done enough today. I really hope I've done enough in my day in the restaurant. I hope the judges see how hard I've tried, how much I have learnt in the last few days. I've got my fingers crossed and I just really, really hope I get put through.
Steve's flavours really got to me. I didn't expect that amount of flavour in that mackerel dish. Those tomatoes, although they were peeled, they could have been maybe cut in half or quarters to make the dish a little bit more elegant. Saying that, the flavours were fantastic. It was a great, great starter. His main course of fillet of veal with the sweetbreads, I thought that was fantastic. That was cooking of the highest order. The perfectly cooked and seasoned meat, the lovely little nuggets of sweetbread coated in a curry-flavoured breadcrumb, which gave it just a little hint of, of spices there, and a sauce, which... The sauce was... Tremendous. On any other day against any other person, I'm sure I'd be going through, but obviously Daniel's a very good cook as well. So it is just a case of hoping desperately that they choose to put me through. It does seem to me to be criminal to not allow one of these chefs to go through. We have been given four plates of great food, and I think we would be happy in any great restaurant if we were delivered that kind of food. You find a good reason to throw one of these chefs out, because I can't. What reason? We'd rather you'd have sliced a tomato, we'd rather you didn't put a spoonful of caviar on it. I mean, their food is absolutely exceptional. Both of these chefs have achieved the highest possible standard, and either one of them could go all the way. So what do we do now? made our decision. You are both going through. <laughs> How the hell does that work? What can we do? You are very, very good. <sighs> What can we do? You are very, very good. Jesus. Congratulations. I'm absolutely <laughs> shocked, to be honest. I was not expecting that in the slightest. Can't believe it. I can't. I can't have enough words for it. I can't believe it. It's fantastic. There's absolutely no way we could have split these two. They both deserve their place in the next round. Obviously, they see potential in both of us. I just hope we can both make it to the final now and battle it out in the final together. Would have been horrible to knock Steve out. I promised him I would go on and win if I did knock him out, though. Yeah, we, uh, we had a little pact. <laughs> so, whoever went through has to win. So, that remains, I think.